This is 2020 Church, and I'm Pastor Larry Enriquez. You know, we I think you just heard two songs, a little short medley, uh, partly the Away in the Manger song and and the uh, Open Our Eyes song. And, and I, I hope that that kind of sends a little message at the beginning to you. At least I'm telling you, it, here's the message. The message is that at Christmas time, and you can tell by my red sweater and the, the lovely things, uh, the Christmas accoutrements that are here and that remind us of this Advent season. Uh, but that as we come into this Christmas or Advent season, that we would make it a season of faith and not worry. We just, I, I, I wanna speak for all of us, but sometimes the season of Advent where we celebrate the incarnate Christ is really a season of worry and stress as we think of all the things that we've done or haven't done this year and the things we need to do by the end of the year. And, and we, we tend to worry just kind of is one of those, you know, pinnacle points of life where we tend to worry about things past and things to come. 
But I hope that we would make it a season of faith and, and see, again, Christ as our eyes are opened to see him this season. Father, as we gather together here in your word, in your name, may you open up our eyes and hearts to ourselves and more than that, even to you, and that we might, Lord, in recognizing who you are, find find the greatest of joy in the midst of a season that can bring us stress and worry. Lord, may we not be of that crowd. I was sitting there in my car eating a Sprouts Harvest Chicken Salad sandwich the other day. <laughs> it's a great sandwich for five ninety nine. dollars It includes kettle chips and, and water. And, and even though I'm not a big water drinker, I usually don't drink it. I'm, I'm, I feel like, wow, I've really got a deal here. It's a, it's a deal I pride myself in, in saying to you. In fact, I can get a a sandwich that sprouts for four ninety nine, and not get the water and the chips. And I was thinking it's such a great deal. And there I was sitting in my car in a little shaded area in a state of joy. One, I was eating. And number two, uh, it's that prideful thing of having this great deal and this food I'm eating. Then my wandering mind starts to creep in. The nagging thoughts of tomorrow, the kind of thoughts that the holidays and Christmas can bring if we let our thoughts go to the dark side. All those things that I will have to do and all the pressure to do them well. I was worrying for you and the church the parenting skills needed by my children to raise strong, brave, faithful, loving, Holy Spirit-dependent filled children in an ever-increasing world of debauchery and anti-Christian sentiment. I was worrying about the future, and in particular, a future for those that I love without me because I won't be here with them till they're old. And they need me because I have so much they need. However, God, God wanted to reassure me that I wasn't powerful enough to control much at all, let alone the future. He had it under control. And I'd, I need only to bow to my supreme commander and say, yes, Lord. See, I have to remind myself that I'm not some kind of God. And though I might thank God for the various skills and insights I think I have, that God can do just fine without me. So however long he has me or you here for the future, the future can do quite well without us because God will not leave the future to itself. That's a regular temptation for me, by the way, a false presumption that I have control over things that I don't. And I'm tempted every day and maybe the biggest is in regards to temptation is to worry, to sinfully worry about tomorrow's. When Advent season is upon us, we're invited to enter into the mystery of God's unfathomable love for us, entering into this world to save the beloved. Listen to who Jesus is, lest we forget. Again, not what Jesus did, but listen to who Jesus is. I'm going to read to you out of the scriptures here. Christ is the exact likeness of the unseen God. He existed before God made anything at all. And in fact, Christ himself is the creator who made everything in heaven and earth. The things we can see and the things that we can't see. The spirit world with its kings and kingdoms, its rulers and authorities. 
all were made by Christ for his own use and for his own glory. He was before all else began, and it is his power that holds everything together. I'd encourage you to go read that again out of the book of Colossians chapter 1. That's verses 15 through 17. But did you hear all of that? It's really too hard to comprehend or to take in. I mean, fully, of course. We can comprehend it at some level. But to know that this is the Christ who forsook all those things to take on skin, to take on bone and blood, and all the pain that comes with that, with all of the filth that comes with that, he took it on for you and for me. And you know when he was born, here's a statement of the condition of life for him when he was born. It's right after the Magi come. Here's what it says. Arise, as an angel comes to Joseph, his dad, his earthly caretaker. Arise, take the young child and his mother, probably Jesus now a toddler, and escape to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word for Herod will seek the young child to kill him. Now I'm, I'm reading this passage to put into juxtaposition the reality of who Christ is, always was and always will be and what he humbly set down to take on flesh. Christmas, this is the Christ. Isn't it hard to fathom? You know, to help us better see this, and again, I hope change our perspective of Christmas. Or I should say, bring it back into proper focus. A couple of nights back, I had awakened early in the morning or late at night, however you want to say it. And not be, being able to fall back asleep, I, I had turned to Psalm 8. And it was like a soothing glass of water to a parched laborer. I remember working long, tough hours when I was in the construction trade the summers of Southern California and working out and, and in the early days, you know, carrying lumber to the trenches we had built to create forms for the foundations of the houses we were building. Without shirt and sweating profusely, I just remember how good water tastes. Maybe I haven't been thirsty enough to like water like I used to. One who generally sits down now in front of the Bible or books or the computer not as active as I was when I was a young man. But I tell you, when I labored, there was nothing like water for the parched body. That's what Psalm 8 felt like to my soul. You know, if I can, when I read this verse to you, Consider the love of Jesus for you and for me, but you think of you in light of the fact that he fully knows you. I don't fully know you. I don't know that I fully know myself. We're often unaware of the motives that we hold. We think we know. In fact, we're so sinful. We think we know other people's motives and we never do. We assume we do and we make decisions based on those assumptions, but we don't fully know them. We don't know the hearts of other men and we struggle knowing our own. So in light of that, of not just the sins you know, but the unconscious sins behind your, your, good, mo your good actions, the, those unpure motives, you're just all, we're just never pure. At least I don't think I know anybody like that. I'm not like that. I want to be 
clear in what the right motive is and move on that behalf. I'm not saying you're a total crumb or, or I. God loves us enough to save us. He loves us. He, you're dear to him. But, but, but may you hold that, the reality of that love in light of the fact that you are this human being who's so infirmed, so, um, so broken and, and so sometimes self-deceiving and confused and, and all the things that comes with just being human. And God fully knows you. And God fully and deeply loves you. This God who made the universes and set them aside to take on the form of baby Jesus. This Jesus fully knows you and thus deeply loves you. And maybe you've been laborious or you've been laboring like a young man does in construction. Maybe you've been laboring in your worry, in your need to control. Instead of being active in whatever things are true and, and honest and just and pure and lovely, we labor in our worry. So may this Psalm, Psalm 8, be refreshing to you as it was to me. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent your name is in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have established, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you attend him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet as sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and whatever travels the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. These things he has put under our rule. Now we come to Christ and we get new hearts, new ways of thinking, a new world view. But we're still in broken bodies, not fully redeemed yet. And we still have old path links of thinking that create havoc for us. And we're still tempted every day and find failure. But yet God loves us and God has put us in this place to love him back. In verse 4, when we read, what is man that you are mindful of him? You got to put, who am I that God is mindful of me? Who am I that God is mindful of me? God loves you that much. And Jesus came on Christmas morn that we celebrate because of his deep love for you. This grace love is so real now at this time when we are prone to be a little down and a little stressed. May we work at having none of that and choose joy and choose to look at the reality of this magnificent chasm that has been breached by God sending his son on Christmas to reveal to you now more than ever how much he loves you. This Christmas, this Advent season, one, be mindful of your thoughts and the temptation to worry, but worry not, choose joy. Daily give time to thank God for his love for you. Take time to meditate on the immensity and the profound mystery of his love. 
and read Psalm 8. May this Advent season be the best one for you yet. God bless you. God keep you. God continue to reveal to you his deep love for you. I'll see you Sunday. Have a good night.